everyone. I want you to uh, think of two questions as I scroll through this axial view of the CBCT volume. First question, why was this being taken? Second question, which tooth has a proximal caries? So you, I want you to think of that, okay? So I'm going to go through the volume slowly. So which tooth clearly demonstrates the proximal caries? And why was this taken? You know, I haven't even gone through the anatomic um, video of Comim CT. So I understand if you feel overwhelmed or unable to orient yourself, you will get there. Trust me, um, the more you watch this video, I'll make sure you'll get there. Um, but for now, I think I want you to notice that this patient is missing some teeth. And that is the reason why this was taken. Another question you can ask yourself is, what teeth are missing or a tooth? Okay, that could be a difficult question. Again, if you haven't seen cone beam previously, in order to determine which teeth are missing, you have to have some anatomic features that will help you to orient yourself. And th from this particular view, the best anatomic feature that I'm going to suggest to identify is the nasopalatin canal. And where is it? Ask yourself that question. So this is the nasopalatin canal, which makes this number 8, number 9 is missing, number 10 is missing, we have 11, 12, 13. For those of you who are watching this very carefully, you may have seen that there are two canals. That is another feature suggesting this is a first premolar. And also look at the shape of the canine. Much wider, bigger, right? Compared to these two. So that is another clue that you could have used to say, well, this is canine. We have two premolars. Therefore, lateral incisor and a central incisor number nine um, are missing. So yes, this is correct. If this was taken, uh, in order to assess this area, you can already see without having me make cross-sectional images, the buccal lingual or buccal palatal dimension of the ridge is quite a bit narrower compared to the contralateral side. Okay, so that's why this was taken. Another question that I asked was, where can you find the proximal caries? So we're just going to focus the maxillary teeth for now. So ask yourself, which teeth or tooth clearly demonstrates proximal caries? Unless you're in D2, my D2 class, if you're D3 or D4, by now you should feel pretty comfortable detecting proximal caries on bite wing radiograph, but you have not yet seen carries on comb beam CT, right? So this is a great example of how a how it appears on comb beam CT. So let me zoom out. If you've said, well, um, before I give you the answer, to help you get to the answer, I'm going to rotate the volume and create a corrected sagittal view. Okay, there you go. Now, as I scroll through these uh, corrected sagittal view, can you all determine where it is now?
should be pretty obvious at this point. If you've answered distal of number 13, you're absolutely correct. There's disruption, or I shouldn't say demineralization, of enamel layer and radiolucency spreading along the DEJ extending into dentin. So that is absolutely correct. If you've also set this area, distal of number 12, you may also be likely be correct. I'm also suspicious for the mesial of number 13 as well. But most definitively, this is the lesion or the site that I want you to um, have recognized. I'm a little bit careful to say this is a true lesion or that uh, because Combeam CT is very prone to having beam hardening and different types of artifacts. Uh, luckily in this case we don't have, at least it doesn't appear that we have metallic or composite type of restoration but if we were to have that it can cause so much artifact and it could be mistaken for uh, caries. So I try not to mention dental caries on comb beam definitively unless I'm really really confident. But in this case the patient doesn't appear to have any major restorations in the maxillary arch and when you see this, that is highly, highly suggestive of decay. I'm pretty much 100% confident that this is decay. So now, why don't we take a minute to take a look at this carry on axial view. Oh, we've done that, right? So, right there, there's the axial view. So you can see, again, the mineralization, this almost disrupted pattern of the enamel layer and radiolucency into the dentin. Now let's take a look at number 12 because that was another area that we're a little suspicious, right? But it's certainly not as clear, not as obvious as this site. This is something that I would recommend taking a bite wing radiograph if that was available. Um, if it wasn't available, taking a bite, bite wing radiograph. And if you have taken a bite wing before, uh, you can take a look at that to confirm it. But this one, definitely. So I want you to see this particular view that you normally don't get to see on two-dimensional image, right? So there you go. Right at the contact, it penetrates through the full thickness of enamel and it's also spreading uh, buccolingually. Alright, that's it for me for this video and if you like it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and we'll see you again. Bye.